السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ناس How are you سبيدي How was your weekend شاهد and روان it was good relaxing الحمد لله الحمد لله I posted the meeting details here good afternoon ليلى حبيبة good afternoon good afternoon I received your uh, researches روان and شاهد thank you so much would you like to speak about it روان or شاهد do you want me to display it This mm-hmm. mine is only a word document it's not much but uh, oh. great okay in that case Rawan would you like to display uh, speak about it sweetie do you want me to display it okay miss okay oh. okay great we will just do it for two minutes inshallah before we uh, move ahead with our topic inshallah okay we have six girls so till then let's discuss the uh, research submitted by Rawan. Do I have your number saved, Rawan? Uh, okay. Okay, this is the one, isn't it? Yes, miss. Yeah, give me a moment. Many of the girls submitted the researches in the form of PPDs and PDFs. Thank you so much, ladies. So if any one of you want to discuss about it, if you want to present it, I will give you time, inshallah. I'm starting with Ravan. If any one of you is interested apart from Ravan, you may also tell me and then I'll display your research, inshallah. So, Miss, you want it as a PDF? Anything, either a PPT, PDF, video, yes. Word file, anything would be fine, no problem. Or an infographic. Wow, this is really colorful and nice. Yes, Rawan, you may start. Yes, um, so today I'll be focusing mostly on the uh, talking about the small intestines, the processes that take place inside the small intestines. So both the digestion and the absorption take place in the small intestines. Mm-hmm. Um, no, Miss, I want you to press on the liver thing. Okay, like that. All right. Great. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So mm-hmm. inside the small intestines, both the digestion and absorption take place, as I said. Uh, so. In the first part of the um, small intestines, which is the duodenum, we there are three accessory organs, which are the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas. Um, the the uh, to start with, we're going to talk about the liver. So the liver has two main important roles in the digestive system, which is to process the nutrients absorbed and to produce the uh, bile, uh, mm-hmm. which is later stored in the gallbladder. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, and skinny press. I shall. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now we move on to the gallbladder, which is that pear shaped um, organ that is sitting under the liver. And this is the one responsible for storing the bile, which is produced by the liver. Uh, so its role is to emulsify, or as I say, physically break down the fat particles into fat mm-hmm. droplets so that it could easily move through the watery environment in the small intestines Mm -hmm. and yes the the next thing i'll be talking about is the pancreas so after those fat droplets have moved the pancreas starts releasing some pancreatic juices which are called the enzymes which break up those uh, fat droplets Mm -hmm. along with other sugars and starches yes miss right And after the food has been broken down, it has no value unless it enters the bloodstream. So this is where the func- function of the jejunum and the ileum uh, come into uh, come into hand. So the jejunum is the second 
part of the small intestines and the ileum is the third part so the, the gen jejunum it has a lining of uh, finger-like projections called villi same thing with the ileum too mm -hmm. and uh, it's present in order to maximize the absorption of the nutrients from the gut contents mm -hmm. and its function is to mainly absorb the nutrients that are there by um, the nutrients they start moving across the epithelial cells that are present on the surface of the villi and through through the processes of passive uh, transport of some carbohydrates and the active transport of amino acids vitamins and most glucose molecules this is how they move into the bloodstream mm -hmm. and these help in cell metabolism and growth great and for the ileum, uh, it's for its inner structure, it's also made up of tiny finger-like projections. And the ileum is where most absorption takes place. Um, its function is to absorb all the remaining nutrients that weren't absorbed by the uh, jejunum. And so these could include the vitamin, uh, vitamin, sorry, vitamin B12, and the bile salt, uh, the bile salts and acids that haven't been absorbed, so that they're recycled again and reused by the gallbladder. And I guess. That's all. Thank you so much. Oh, that was superb. Uh, really, uh, Ravan, I just loved it. So why don't you please do a voice over and send it to me in the form of a video because I want to share your spectacular work with Mrs. Buffa and uh, Ms. Hiba and all uh, so that she can give you an appreciation certificate, inshallah. Okay, Ravan, can you do it? Sure, Miss. Sure. Yeah, your accent is very nice, mashallah, as well. It's, it's spectacular, the entire thing. So just put your voice over and record it in the form of a video and send it to me, inshallah. And I shall give you a certificate for it, of course, along with the bonus mark, mashallah. Amazing. Thank you so much. You did a superb job. All right, ladies, so whenever you want to do a presentation as spectacular as this, when you're putting so much of effort, I want you to do a voice over as well uh, so that it, it is so presentable so that we can, we can represent it uh, uh, from your grade nine. Uh, these researchers, they can represent our school and mashallah, and everybody will, will notice how, uh, how spectacular and mashallah talented you all are. Okay, thank you so much, Rahman. Uh, anybody else who wants to submit, uh, who wants to uh, speak about their research, ladies? Okay, so shall we move on with our topic then? All right, we have fifteen attendees. Of course, I received many other spectacular uh, uh, researches as well. All of them, you will get a bonus mark, inshallah. So let's start uh, with the words from the Quran about remembering Allah Rabbi Zidni Alma or oh Allah increase us in beneficial knowledge. Allahumma inni as'aluka aliman nafir. So the objectives for the topic today would be about the digestion and the alimentary canal. Uh, we did this, uh, we were discussing about the process of mechanical digestion and chemical digestion in detail. So today we'll be discussing, uh, our objective would be to define absorption as movement of digestive food molecule through the wall of the intestine into the blood, that is in the small intestine, and also we'll define assimilation as the movement of digested food molecules into the cells of the body where they are used, becoming part of the cells. Okay, so let me take you to this slide directly where we were talking about digestion. And let me ask you a question from the topic we covered in the last lesson about digestion. Who's going to define digestion to me, ladies? What is digestion? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, here. How do you define digestion? You may read off from the slide here. Hello. Quickly, who wants to do it? And from your textbook page, we are doing page number 78 and 79. Yeah. Ladies, what is digestion? Quickly, quickly. Who wants to define? Laila, could you please define digestion? Yes, sure. 
Digestion is the breakdown of large uh, insoluble food molecules into small water soluble molecules using uh, mechanical and chemical processes. Perfect. Uh, Shahad, could you please tell me what are the various uh, processes involved in the sequence of nutrition? Uh, yes, ma'am. So first starts off with ingestion, which is the process of you taking in the food, by mechanical digestion in your mouth, and then uh, obviously mechanical digestion, and then chemical digestion, which takes place in the in the enzymes in your stomach, uh, and then the absorption, in which it mainly takes place in the small intestine, in which they they your small intestine filters out to the useful nutrients that are needed by your body and then the waste products products and then the assimilation in which all of the uh, all of the nutrients are, are travel through the bloodstream and then ingestion uh, and in which you know fibers takes is is a very major part in this process uh, and you know excreting out uh, the uh, the waste products and defeciation is also similar to that the, the actual process. Yes, perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was very well explained. All right. So here we have the key definitions of all the processes which just now Shah had mentioned about. And we were discussing about mechanical digestion. So what is mechanical digestion, ladies? How is it different from chemical digestion? Who's going to tell me? Mm -hmm. Lujain, would you like to explain the difference between mechanical and chemical digestion? Lujain al -Takofi? Yes, uh, the mechanical digestion is for breakdown of food to a smaller pieces with no chemical change to the food molecule. But the chemical digestion is the breakdown of large insoluble molecules into the small soluble molecule. Yeah, but what are involved in chemical digestion? Lujen? Are chemicals involved in mechanical digestion? No, isn't it? So mechanical digestion is something which happens without the action of any chemicals, either by the action of our teeth and tongue wherein we break down the food or by the churning of the stomach as you can see on the slide here. All right. So mechanical digestion takes place either in the mouth or in the stomach due to the muscular contractions of the wall of the stomach. Now who's going to explain about chemical digestion, ladies? Thank you, Lujan. Mice, could you please explain chemical digestion? Uh, okay, Miss. Uh, so the chemical uh, digestion. Uh, oh, so the chemical digestion is the breakdown of uh, insolid of insoluble food into smaller into smaller one, and enzymes and enzymes take place in the uh, in the chemical digestion. So it occurs in the mouth, in mm -hmm. the mouth, stomach, and the small intestine. Mm -hmm. um, yes. yes, and that's it. Yes, thank you so much, Mice. The chemical digestion involves the action of the enzymes which are released in various parts of the alimentary canal. So mostly chemical digestion takes place in the mouth, the stomach and the small intestine. As we all know, the enzyme name uh, depends on the type of the food on which or the type of the nutrient on which it acts upon, like the proteases, the carbohydrates and the lipases. So here are the key definitions of mechanical digestion and chemical digestion, which you might have to memorize. Okay, so then we were talking about the digestion in each and every organ of the alimentary canal. Did we start doing this, ladies? Did yes, we start doing this? Shahid? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, till which part did we finish? Did we, we were discussing about the esophagus or the stomach? No, ma'am, we stopped at the pancreas. We finished okay, the pancreas great. as well. We finished yeah. the small intestine and we finished the pancreas as well. All right, great. So let me quickly summarize as to, okay, from the mouth. Okay, as you all know, the mouth, uh, in the mouth, the ingestion takes place and the food is turned into a bolus by the action of the teeth and the tongue, wherein the food mixes with the saliva and also an enzyme present in the saliva, which is salivary amylase, which acts on the carbohydrates in the food. Now, this bolus, uh, it mixes with the saliva which is produced by uh, the three glands which are present in the mouth or near the mouth, you can say, which is the parot uh, parotid gland, the submandibular gland and the sublingual gland which all produce the saliva. 
<coughs> and the amylase present in the saliva mixes with the food, making it very uh, lubricated and smooth so that it can pass through our esophagus. Now, esophagus also moves with the help of the peristalsis, which is the muscular contraction and relaxation of the walls of the esophagus, with the help of which the food, the bowl is, it moves through the es esophagus and reaches our stomach. Okay, so in the stomach, both the mechanical as well as the chemical digestion takes place. Stomach produces gastric juice, which contains pepsin, an enzyme which works on proteins. And uh, coming to the mechanical digestion, the, the stomach muscles, they churn up the food, making it uh, uh, into a mixture known as the chyme, which mixes with the hydrochloric acid and the other enzymes present in the food, and it turns into a mixture known as chyme. Okay, so like all parts of the alimentary canal, the stomach wall contains goblet cells which secrete the mucus, uh, which is a lining to the stomach so that the stomach does not get affected by the action of the HCL, uh, which is very, very acidic. So after one or two hours, the food remains in the stomach for one or for two hours and then through the splinter muscle, this is the muscle, uh, with which the food, it leaves the stomach and enters the first part of the small intestine, which is the duodenum. Okay. So uh, here is the entire picture of the small intestine, which can be again broken into three parts, which is the first part, duodenum, the middle part, which is jejunum, and the last part, which is known as the ileum. The entire small intestine is about five meters long, and uh, it is quite narrow, and different parts of the small intestine have different names, as I just told you. So let's talk about the role of pancreas in the digestion. So pancreas is about six inches long. As you can see in this picture, this leaf-like structure is the pancreas. It sits across the back of the abdomen behind the stomach. Okay, so the head of the pancreas is on the right side of the abdomen and is connected to the duodenum, which is the first section of the small intestine through a small tube called the pancreatic duct. Can you see this is the pancreatic duct, which produces the pancreatic juice. So the pancreatic juice, which is produced by the pancreatic duct in the pancreas, it mixes with the food in the duodenum. It contains enzymes, mucus, and hydrogen carbonate, which neutralize the action, the acidic action of the chyme. Because when the food leaves the uh, stomach, it is acidic because of, it mixes with the hydrochloric acid in the stomach, and it is very, very acidic. So this acidic uh, 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 property of the food is neutralized when it mixes with the enzymes, mucus, and hydrogen carbonate of the pancreatic juice. Now, pancreatic juice is poured into the small intestine through this pancreatic duct. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's talk also about the enzymes which are present in the pancreatic juice. So, several enzymes are secreted into the duodenum. They are made in the pancreas, which is a cream colored gland lying just underneath the stomach. So a tube called the pancreatic duct leads from the pancreas into the duodenum and this secretes the pancreatic juice. Pancreatic juice, which is a fluid made by pancreas, flows along this tube. So this fluid contains many enzymes, including amylase, protease and lipase. Okay, so it contains the enzymes which are required for the breakdown of all three important nutrients, which are amylase, which works on carbohydrates, protease, which works on proteins, and lipase, which helps in the breakdown of fats. So uh, what does amylase do? Amylase further breaks down the carbohydrates present in the food after, the, after they are acted upon in the mouth by the salivary amylase. So the next step is the amylase breaks down the starch to maltose. Then trypsin is a protease, which is an enzyme which works on proteins, which breaks down proteins to polypeptides. Then lipase, it breaks down fats to fatty acids and glycerol. So these enzymes, they do not work well in acid environments, but the chyme, which has come out from the stomach, contains HCl. So pancreatic juice contains sodium hydrogen carbonate, which partially neutralizes the acid. Understood, ladies? So for these enzymes to work efficiently on the food, uh, the acidic property of this uh, of the food now, which has left the stomach, it needs to be neutralized. So, in order to neutralize this acidic property, the food, when it mixes with the uh, 
hydrogen, uh, the sodium hydrogen carbonate, which has also been released by the pancreat, uh, pancreatic juice. Uh, after this, this has sodium hydrogen carbonate neutralizes the food. These three enzymes they effectively act on the various nutrients present on the food, and they help in further breaking down of the food. Clear, ladies? So this is what happens in the uh, duodenum by the action of the pancreatic juice. Clear so far, ladies, before we move on to liver? Any questions? Ladies? No, clear? Not clear. All clear? All right. So let's discuss about the liver, which also has a role in the digestion. The liver is the largest glandular organ weighing about three pounds and the liver is reddish brown in color and feels rubbery to the touch. So this organ which you see over here is the liver. It produces bile which helps to neutralize the acidic chyme and also emulsify the fats. Now this bile juice it contains enzymes which only can act on the fats and they can break them down further. The bile juice does not contain enzymes which break down either proteins or carbohydrates. They can only break down the fats and emulsify the fats, meaning they can break them down further. Also, the bile helps in neutralizing the acidic action of the food. And bile juice is also important in assimilation. Assimilation meaning absorption of the nutrients into the bloodstream or helping in the absorption of nutrients. All right, ladies. So what is the only function of liver? The production of the bile juice, which helps in neutralizing the acidic chyme and also in breaking down the fats further. Clear? Yeah. Now let's move on to gallbladder. Gallbladder is a four inch pear shaped organ, as you can see in this picture here. It's positioned under liver in the upper right section of your abdomen. Okay, like this. The gallbladder stores bile, a combination of fluids, fat, and cholesterol. So what does gallbladder do? It helps in storing the bile which has been released by the liver. Bile helps break down fat from food in your intestine. And the gallbladder delivers bile into the small intestine. Okay, so the function of the gallbladder is to collect the bile which has been secreted by the liver and to deliver this bile into the small intestine. Okay, ladies, so this is the small organ which you can see over here under the liver, which is the gallbladder. What does it do? It uh, delivers bile into the small intestine like this and also it allows the fat soluble vitamins and nutrients to be more easily absorbed into the bloodstream. Okay, so you can see both the gallbladder and the liver both are related to only fat digestion. They help in breakdown of fat in your food and also the gallbladder delivers the, uh, the bile juice into the small intestine helping in uh, more digestion or easy digestion of the fats because the fat soluble vitamins and nutrients can be more easily absorbed into the bloodstream. Now bile is a yellowish green alkaline watery fluid which helps to neutralize the acidic mixture from the stomach. It is made in the liver and then stored in the gallbladder. Okay, so whenever you're talking about the bile juice, uh, you will talk about its uh, production and storage. It is produced in the liver, whereas it is stored in the gallbladder and also taken to the small intestine by the gallbladder. It flows to the duodenum along the bile duct. Bile does not contain any enzymes. It does, however, help to digest the fats. So the only function of bile juice is helping in the emulsification of the fats or the further breaking down of the fats into soluble materials which can be easily absorbed by the small intestine. Now it does this by breaking up the large drops of fat into very small ones, making it easier for the lipase and the pancreatic juice to digest them into fatty acids and glycerol. So that is why we are saying this is known as emulsification. It is not digestion. Okay, so this is called emulsification and is done by salts in the bile known as bile salts. So emulsification is a type of a mechanical digestion. 
all right ladies so even this can be considered as a mechanical digestion as no enzymes are involved in the bile juice which can break down the fats but they are helping in emulsifying the fats meaning breaking down the large droplets into smaller ones allowing them to digest easily so bile also contains yellowish bile pigments uh, these are made by the liver when it breaks down the old rbc and the bile pigments are made from hemoglobin the pigments are not needed by the body so they are eventually excreted out in the feces all right ladies so here you can see in detail about the carbohydrate digestion in the various steps and organs in our uh, alimentary canal so starting with the carbohydrate digestion as we all know it starts with the mouth isn't it so what happens with carbohydrates as soon as we ingest them or we eat them the teeth they break down large pieces of food into smaller ones then uh, water in digestive juices dissolves some food then small pieces of food and some food in solution like this then these are the starch molecules and these starch molecules are acted upon by the amylase which is present in our saliva which breaks down the starch molecules to maltose so this first step happens in the mouth itself when only the starch not the protein or the fat ladies please remember only the carbohydrate or the starch digestion starts from the mouth where in the starch is bre broken down into maltose by the action of salivary amylase so you can see these are the maltose uh, disaccharides you know do you remember ladies maltose is a disaccharide that is why you can see this is how the picture is so later this maltose is being acted upon by maltase which breaks uh, breaks down the maltose into glucose molecules into monosaccharides which can be easily absorbed by the blood stream clear ladies about the carbohydrate digestion you have the same picture on your page number uh, 79 you can see in this table which shows about the carbohydrate protein and fat digestion and this is about the carbohydrate digestion as to how it takes place amylase is produced by salivary glands pancreas and small intestine so if you're being asked about the three organs where in the digestion of the carbohydrate takes place it is the mouth the pancreas and the small intestine of course in the pancreas the digestion does not take place but the pancreatic juice which is released by the pancreas mixes with the food in the small intestine and the digestion of the carbohydrates takes place in the mouth and the small intestine clear ladies about carbohydrate digestion any questions before we move further no must thank you thank you all clear thank you shahad others rawan laila mais ahed lujan jana jamil any questions no ma'am no. all clear thank you so much so let's uh, check out the uh, protein digestion over here all right so what happens to the proteins uh, when we eat the proteins the teeth they break down the large pieces of protein into smaller ones then the water in our saliva it mixes the water in the digestive juices dissolves some of the food in the mouth uh, not the digestion only the mechanical digestion we are talking about and then small pieces of food and some food in solution like this it it is uh, now a uh, little uh, smooth Uh, then these are the protein molecules which you can see okay then uh, a, these protein molecules reach our stomach then what happens in our stomach the proteases they break down the protein molecules to polypeptide molecules okay so the the proteins are first acted upon in our stomach by an enzyme known as pepsin and also the proteases they break down the protein to further into polypeptide molecules making them more simpler now these polypeptides are further broken down into amino acids which can be readily absorbed by the blood stream in the small intestine now peptidases are the enzymes which break down the polypeptides into amino acids molecules so uh, the protein digestion it takes place in the stomach the pancreas and the small intestine 
So unlike the carbohydrates, no protein digestion takes place in the mouth. It starts in the stomach itself where pepsin acts on the protein in the stomach. Then after that, the, uh, protea the, pep the proteases which are present in the pancreatic juice, they act upon the food in the duodenum of the small intestine and they break them into simpler compounds known as amino acids which can be readily absorbed into the bloodstream. So this is about the protein digestion. Clear ladies? Hello? Shall we talk about fat digestion? Yes or no? Is it clear ladies or am I going very fast? Are you with me? Yes, master. Thank you. So fats are ultimately broken down to fatty acids and glycerol where they can be readily absorbed into the bloodstream. So even the fat digestion starts from the uh, when the uh, uh, food after the chine stage mixes with the bile juice from the liver. So you can see the teeth, they break down the large pieces of uh, fat in the food into smaller ones. Then the bile salts, they break down the large droplets of fat into the smaller ones. So the second step right after the mouth is again the mechanical digestion which takes place with the help of the bile juice because the bile salts and the bile juice, they help in emulsification of the fats. So after this emulsification takes place in the small intestine, the, bar, the fats, they mix with the lipases, which are produced by the pancreatic juice, which break down the fat molecules into fatty acids and glycerol. So lipase breaks down the fat molecules to fatty acids and glycerol molecules, which can be readily absorbed into the bloodstream. You can see in this picture here like this. So where does the chemical digestion of the fats takes place, ladies? If I'm asking you about chemical digestion of fats, where does it take place? Mm -hmm. Who's going to answer this question? Where does the chemical digestion of fats take place? Quickly. Ravan? It takes place in the small intestine. Mm -hmm. So and what happens in the small intestine? The pancreas, they uh, secrete those enzymes, which are the lip lipases, which break down the fats to glycerols and fatty acids. Perfect. So we can say uh, the organ where the chemical digestion takes place is only small intestine because the pancreatic juice mixes with the food in the duodenum of the small intestine where the chemical digestion takes place. What about the physical digestion? What about the mechanical digestion of fats? The mechanical digestion of fats takes place by the gallbladder. How the gallbladder? Rowan? Where it secretes uh, bile and it emulsifies the fats mm -hmm. and, breaks, uh, and, breaks, mm -hmm. and breaks them into the fat droplets, which are further broken down into the smaller units by the pancreas. Perfect. So the mechanical digestion, apart from the mouth, takes place uh, by the uh, bile juice secreted by the liver, which is stored in the gallbladder, which helps in the emulsification of the fats, which is also considered a mechanical digestion. Thank you so much, Roman. Clear, ladies, about digestion? Any questions so far? Ladies, so we are done with your page number 78 and 79 from your textbook. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Before we move on with absorption here. Mm -hmm. No, no questions. All clear? Yes. Yeah. All right. So before we move further, let me assign you homework on this page itself. So uh, last time, I believe you did question number 7.7 .7 and 7.8. Did you, ladies? Yes. 
Okay. All right. I signed this already. Uh, so questions number, you will do the, all the questions from here for the ones who did not submit so far. 7.7 uh, .7 to 7.10 on uh, page number 80 would be your homework, ladies. So all these questions are related to digestion. Let me post it on your group here, your 9B, isn't it? Give me a moment while I... Okay, I've posted it, so this would be your homework, ladies. So let's move ahead with absorption. Okay, so till here you have for your uh, quiz one, ladies. So you will be have you will be uh, asked questions on seven point one, which is diet, and seven point two, which is digestion. So these three slides would be very important for you to understand and study as we have exactly like your textbook and also revise all the MCQ questions because mostly MCQ questions will be asked in your quiz and uh, also go through all the topic questions related to these two topics only for your quiz one. Any questions before we move on? We have four minutes left. We'll quickly start absorption. Or do you want me to start with the teeth as we have in 7.3? And we go in this order? Or shall I start with teeth? I think we'll complete the absorption first in a flow and then do the teeth. Will that be fine with you? Ladies. Can yeah. I start with the absorption? And then do the absorption? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you for your suggestion. So let's start with teeth then in the same order as we have in our textbook. So teeth would be chapter 7.3. So we are on page number 18 now, 18, 81. All right. So uh, teeth, they play a main role in the mechanical digestion of the food. Isn't it, ladies? Teeth help with the ingestion and the mechanical digestion of the food we eat. And teeth can be used to bite off pieces of food, breaking them into smaller pieces. So they then chop, crush, or grind them into smaller pieces. Uh, this gives the food a larger surface area, which makes it easier for the enzymes to work on and the food in the digest on the food in the digestive system. So when the teeth are breaking down the food, not only uh, it, it is making the food uh, 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 small in size so that they can swallow it easily through the, so it can pass easily through the esophagus. Also, the teeth, the surface area of the food is increased when it is broken down by the teeth so that the digestion is easy and the enzymes can work on the food easily. So it also helps soluble parts of the food to dissolve. Not only this, uh, which all are the water-soluble vitamins in the food which we eat, uh, like the various sugars which can be readily absorbed into our uh, blood, uh, into our uh, uh, by dissolving in water in our mouth. Teeth breaks down the food. Okay. For example, if we are eating a uh, fruit, so immediately the water-soluble.